In this video we're going to look at how we can edit footage inside of Fusion 9. Now obviously Fusion is not uh, an editing system, it's not designed for video editing, so the workflow has to be done you know, within Fusion's node-based system. Uh, it's a bit clunky by comparison to using a, a video editor, but of course Fusion is a compositing system, not a video editing system. So let's have a look at how we do this. First off, let's get some footage in. Now, I can, of course, use the loader that's uh, up here, uh, which is obviously the, the sort of straightforward option. But uh, I prefer to use uh, drag and drop if I have my window available. So here is my footage folder for this project. Here is the gladiator.mov file. And I'm just simply going to drag it into the flow uh, and then minimize that out of the way. So. Here we are, we have our footage. Now, before we do anything with it, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is a bit of housekeeping. I'm gonna rename it because, uh, as you can see, if I hover over it, we get the full name. It's Loader1 followed by the name of the clip, and the name of the clip has a big long number in front of it, which is probably a catalog number of some kind. I'm actually going to rename this, so I'm gonna hit F2 on my keyboard, uh, and I'm just gonna call this Gladiator1. Now remember Fusion doesn't support spaces, so if you put a space in one, that won't work. It'll strip it off. Um, if, you, if you do want to have some visible spacing, use an underscore, but uh, I'm just gonna use one. So let's do that, hit okay. Right, we have a piece of footage called Gladiator 1. I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard to push it into the first window over here. And there we are, we have some footage. Uh, we can see looking down on the timeline that you know we have 238 frames is the length of the clip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my composition to the same length so i'm just going to click down here change the overall length to 238 and hit return there we are right okay so we have our footage in and what we want to do is we want to have a look at it and uh, see what any of the issues are now before i play it back uh, I'm going to change the playback settings down here. At the moment, it's set to auto proxy and, and motion blur, but for speed, I don't really need to see the quality of the image. I'm just interested in whether there's any editing issues, uh, editorial issues. So I'm going to turn these both off. I'm going to turn proxy on. Now I have my proxy set up already, but if I right click, you'll see I've got it at level three. That gives a, a good playback performance. So with that set, I'm now going to hit play forward. Uh, and as you'll see, it's caching up. And once it's done this, it'll play back in real time. And there we go. So we now have our clip playing back. And you can actually immediately see that the, there is a problem with the clip. If I um, pull this down a bit and give it a bit more real estate, you'll see that uh, there's a freeze in the clip. There's kind of like a pause. That's, uh, let's just drag the timeline and see it there. So for some reason, this clip has a freeze in the middle of it. It's very strange, especially for a bit of library footage. However, anyway, obviously that's not a lot of use to us because that just means that our, everything's gonna stop at that point, uh, including any tracking that we do and anything like that. What I'm gonna do is I want to edit this out and as I said, you know, obviously this is not an editing system. So let's see how we do this in, in Fusion. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find out which frames we're dealing with. There's the freeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the jog keys to find out the exact frame where the last frame of movement is and the first frame where it starts moving again. So the square brackets on our keyboard will let us jog. I'm just going to jog back. And as we can see, we're, we're now moving uh, and I'm going to zoom in. I'm actually going to get a fit and I'm going to set it to 100% and uh, just scroll up and I'm going to use the shield um, as my point of reference just to make sure I can see when things start to move again. So there it is moving and there it's frozen. That is the last frame there of motion. That's frame 84. So we have motion up to frame 83, 83. 84 and then frame 85 is a, is a duplicate it's a freeze frame there's there's frame 84 let's see when it starts up again so let's go forward 
there it is there let's go back find a start point okay so there's the first frame of motion 101 84 is the last frame of motion and 101 is the start we want to trim between those points so let's do that so I'm just going to fit that back uh, how do we do this well if we go to the timeline we can at least see our clip um, more like a video editor so here is our timeline and you can see the strip of uh, footage here in the timeline uh, and you can also see where our playhead is here at frame 84. What I want to do is I want to go back to the flow and I'm going to duplicate this clip. So I'm going to, with it selected, it's highlighted, Control C to copy it. So I'm going to click off. If I don't click off, it's going to actually create a merge node. Um, so I'm going to click off so nothing's selected and then Control V to paste. Let's just move that up to here to be tidy. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it because obviously it's just put an underscore one at the end, which is because Fusion won't allow any node to have a duplicate name. Let's with it selected, let's hit F2 and I'm just going to call this Gladiator 2. There we go. So now when we go back to the timeline, you'll see that we have two clips. They're identical, of course. And what we want to do is we want to trim these clips so that we are losing the bit that we don't want. Now we're at frame 84 here and that's where this playhead is. So we know that that's our last good frame. So what we're going to do is come over here and you'll notice that if you hover over a clip in the, in the center, you get an arrow pointing in both directions, which means you can slide the clip in time. There we are. And if you hover over the end of a clip, you get a single arrow. That means you can trim the clip. Now you can do this in the modifier panel uh, over on the right hand side over here shift it around you'll, you'll notice that as I move it the trim value is changing um, as, I, as I make the adjustments so these are linked but it's much easier to edit in the timeline window than it is to edit in the trim you know in the modifier you know, panel over on the right hand side so I'm going to put that back so as I said we're at frame 84 that's where the playhead is so I'm going to come up to the end of the first clip the top one gladiator one and I'm going to grab the end of it and put it all the way back till we're at 84 and that means that when we go forward a frame it just disappears because it's no longer available the clip's been trimmed and that's kind of what we want the next thing I want to do is do the same with gladiator 2 so if I come down here I'm going to trim the front this time pull that back now you, obviously I'm not going to drop it here because this is where the freeze starts because if I go forward now um, in fact what I'm going to do is uh, if I come here, I shall put this into our second window. So I'm just going to hit 2 on the keyboard. Fit that. Go back to the timeline. So now you'll see that when we hit this point, we transition from the first clip in the playback window in Viewer 1 to the second clip in Viewer 2. And we have the freeze still. So we just need to go to 101. You may remember that's the frame when we start moving again we just need to trim to there there we are so this is where it starts moving again so now to do the edit all we do is we go to the middle of the clip and we drag it back in time until we have our butt joint there our cut and as you can see we're now cutting between the two clips at that point and the edit issue is now gone however of course the problem we have is that we have two separate clips uh, as we cut between them we're not seeing the combined clip you know we're seeing one up to a certain point in time and then it just disappears and then we're seeing the second clip in the other window so what we need to do is we actually now need to combine these together to get one single functional clip back again so let's do that now the natural instinct when doing this would be to take the output of Gladiator 1 and drop it on the output of 2 and do a merge. So let's do that. So if we do a merge and I'm going to send that to window number 1. Now the first thing you'll notice when I've done when I do that is that we get nothing and you think well hold on what's going on here I'm not getting anything and then suddenly when I come up here I'm getting something 
uh, and that's the that's to do with how the the merge node works it's not designed for this what I'm trying what we're trying to do here. it's not designed for editing if I come to the timeline you'll notice where the problem is the merge node only starts to exist at frame 85 uh, you know which is the point where our cut is between the two clips so because I wanted to merge gladiator 1 over 2 it can only do that when gladiator 2 is available to be merged over and it's not available until frame 85 prior to that the merge node won't exist it's just not there now the natural reaction may be just to come up to the merge node and move it you think well if it's not going to you know cover this area let's make it cover it so I'll hover over there and you see we can get the little arrow and no matter what I do I can't actually move it to the left so it's just not going to go and again if I come into the middle and move to the left you can see the clip is shortening and trimming on the on the right hand side but it's just not moving here on the on the left hand of the of, of the clip so that is uh, the issue with the merge node so let's uh, put that back the way it was so let's control Z there we go I haven't resolved our issue because basically the merge node is not the type of node we need to use so let's go back to the flow I'm going to make sure it's selected hit the delete key on the keyboard and get rid of that and what we want is we want what's called the dissolve node I'm going to hold down control and hit space now Obviously, I can um, you know, get at any kind of tool by either coming up here to the Tools menu, of course, or I can obviously right-click and get a right-click menu and come up here and go hunting for it. Uh, if you know the name of the tool you're after, then the quickest way to get it is to use the context menu, uh, which I prefer. So I'm going to hold down Control and hit Space, which is the shortcut for this, and we get this pop-up, Select Tool Dialog. And all you need to do is type the name or start typing it dissolve and without even fully typing you can see it's, i've got dissolve up there and that's what we want i can just hit ok now i don't even need to click on click on it because it's highlighted at the uh, top of the toolbox and there we are we have our dissolve node in our flow so this node is very different to the merge node if you look on the uh, right hand side you'll see that it um, basically just has a blend between the foreground and the background in other words it's designed to dissolve between two images funny enough uh, and that's you know typically an editorial type task you know a transition in other words so this is designed to you know to dissolve between two images at any point uh you know in the timeline and the thing therefore for us is we just want to cut you know it'll work as is without us actually having to do pretty much anything the first thing we're going to do is going to take this is our background so gladiator one is going to be our background so that's going to go into the yellow input node because uh, that's our background uh, input uh, and the green node of course is our foreground so let's put the gladiator one in there and i'm going to select dissolve and hit one on the keyboard to put it over and now immediately you know we're, we're, we're getting something we're actually seeing something in the in the window up here uh, in fact we, we would see anyway because we were at 97 but if I come back here you'll notice that we're still seeing something even though the footage has disappeared in this window now if we go to the timeline you can see what's happened the dissolve node actually now exists for the entire length of the timeline uh, which basically means that it's functioning all the time and we can actually use the dissolve effect if we want if we come up here and I just move it you know effectively that's dissolving between the two although there's nothing really to see because you know we've only got one clip here um, but um, that now does our edit because as you can see as we transition here the although we've got this window over here with uh, this you know this clip appearing in this one is now showing us the complete length of the timeline let's not be distracted I'm just gonna lock that window and let's go back to the flow so here is our flow and now uh, we should find that we don't have as we tran transition across that point we don't have our editorial issue anymore we've trimmed out that hold but let's play it back now notice on the timeline that uh, you know we're now at 222 uh, because obviously we've trimmed it we've lost a bit of footage out of the overall length so let's change the overall length of our comp to match and now I'm just going to play this back this will take a little bit longer this time because obviously we're doing a dissolve 
Uh, even though the dissolve's not really doing anything, it's um, still a process. And there we are. We now have a complete clip that is uh, no longer got this hole in it. And that's good because what we want to do now is we, uh, you know, this dissolve node is now going to be the input for everything else we do in the comp. So the tracking, this is going to go into our tracker because now this is the fixed version of the original footage. So there we are. That's how you basically do editing inside of uh, Fusion 9.